mention about Son, Father, Holy Ghost. So when they were they created, if they were from the very beginning, why didn't any of the old prophets in the Old Testament mention uh, all? It's interesting because the Apostle Paul says just the opposite. He says that a person can't be made right with God by following the Torah. And in Matthew, Jesus says his followers have to follow the Torah. And so, um, so that, that is an interesting issue. The, the question about what do you do about the fact that the Torah doesn't mention Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, of course, that, that's exercised theologians for centuries. Back when they were developing the doctrine of the, of the Trinity, they had, to, they had to deal with this. And they came up with solutions to that that by modern standards, I think, would be seen as creative. Um, uh, one passage in particular uh, is kind of interesting that, that is directly related to Christian doctrine is that the doctrine of the Trinity is not explicitly taught in any passage of the Bible. In other words, the doctrine that there are three gods... Th no, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Dan Brown speaking once more. Uh, the doctrine that there's one God manifest in three persons, that these three persons are each individually completely God, but there's only one God. Not three gods, but one God, but not one person, three persons. So the three in one. This is not taught in any passage of the Bible except 1 John chapter 5, verses 7 and 8, which, uh, in which the author says that there are three uh, witnesses in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. That's... That's, that's a pretty explicit statement about the, about the Trinity. Now, there's an interesting story about this passage because it doesn't show up in the Greek manuscripts of 1 John. It's in the Latin manuscripts of 1 John. When the first scholar to put together a, Greek, a printed Greek New Testament produced his work, this was Erasmus, who was a humanist from Rotterdam, uh, in the year 1516, he put together the first, for the first time the printed edition of the Greek New Testament. He didn't include the verse because it wasn't, in, it wasn't in the manuscripts that he had. And the uh, Latin theologians went, went ballistic. And ac according to the story that, that circulated, uh, Erasmus said, look, it's not in any of the Greek manuscripts. And they said, yes, but it's part of the church's doctrine. You've gotten rid of the Trinity. And, and, and Erasmus said, look, if you can produce a Greek manuscript that has it in it, I'll include it in my next edition. And so they produced a Greek manuscript. And so they, they copied out a Greek, somebody copied out a Greek, and when they got to that point, they translated the Latin back into Greek, stuck it in, and Erasmus was true to his word, and included that in his next edition. And it was on the basis of that edition that the King James Bible translators put the Bible into English. So that's why the verse showed up in the King James translation. So yeah, that certainly affects, affects doctrine. The text now, reads, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. 1 John chapter 5, verse 7. 1 John 5, 7 appears in the King James Bible. It speaks of the Word and the Spirit and the Son. Not the, not the Son, actually. I think the Word and the Spirit and the Father as one, all agreeing in one. It's a blatant forgery, and this is well known by every scholar, every uh, form of Bible notes today will tell you that this text is not part of the original Greek text. It's a forgery. I have to tell you it's a forgery uh, in, invented to promote the Trinitarian idea, probably. It doesn't exist in the manuscripts. It's not found in any manuscript until much, much later than the manuscripts w which we have. It, it originally appeared in the margin of some Latin copies. And at the time of the Reformation, when they were producing the English Bible, Erasmus was challenged uh, to the effect that if, if one could find one extant manuscript w that had it, then he agreed to have it in there. Well, somebody produced an Irish manuscript, I think, of the 1500s or something, and he was forced to put it in there. It's been rightly omitted from all modern translations. It's a forgery. It's a fraud. It doesn't belong in Scripture and cannot be argued by anyone in favor of the Trinity. We have 1 John 5, 7, which explicitly defines the Trinity. Give us the verse, and then should it be in or should it be out? First uh, John 5, 7 that's found in the King James Bible says that there are three witnesses in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Spirit, and these three are one. This is a verse that was added to the Bible in 1522 when Erasmus, who was the first 
a publisher of any Greek New Testament, got pressure from the church to add this Trinitarian statement because it had been found in some Latin manuscripts. And so there was some scribe by the name of Roy working in 1520 at Oxford, and he writes out this whole Greek New Testament and somehow gets into Erasmus's hands. And Erasmus never made the promise that he'd put it in if, if he found such a manuscript, but he basically said the reverse. I didn't put it in because I didn't find any manuscript. So he finds this manuscript. I'm sure somebody brought it to his door. And he writes in that Greek text, and he actually changes the text from what Roy had written, because Roy didn't know very, Greek very well. He wrote, translated the Latin into Greek, you know, and Erasmus had to make the fixes. But it's not found in our ancient manuscripts. It's found in four 16th century manuscripts, and four manuscripts in the 12th century or later in the marginal note with a 16th or 17th century hand. That's a passage that I'd have to say, this is not authentic. So for 1,500 years, you stack up all the documents and the copies that you had, and there's not one copy that's got that verse in it. Not one Greek copy, right. Okay. We have it in a few late Latin Vulgate manuscripts. Yeah. <laughs> وَإِن لَّمْ يَنْتَهُوا عَمَّا يَقُولُونَ لَيَمَسَّنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ أَفَلَا يَتُوبُونَ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَيَسْتَغْفِرُونَهُ وَاللَّهُ غَفُورٌ رَّحِيمٌ Trinity You see this word Trinity is not in the Bible Imagine a foundation of faith, the foundation of Christianity, the Trinity, because that's what they're trying to tell us is we say we, God is one, they say yes, God is one, but he's three in one. The word Trinity is not in the Bible. Believe me, it's not there. Trinity, not there. The word Bible, Bible is not in the Bible. Believe me, the word Bible is nowhere in the Bible, any Bible. It hasn't got inside, it's on the outside. Who put it there? You put it there. How did you get this word Bible? They got it from the Greek word Biblos. Biblos means book, and they put Bible. Bible means book. Holy Bible means holy book. This word Bible is not in the Bible. Trinity, not there. You see, we have the word Trinity in the Quran. Amazing. The Christian believes he hasn't got it. The Quran has it. The word Trinity is in the Quran. Amazing, isn't it? He believes it. In his book, it doesn't exist. We don't believe it, it's here. You know what it says? It says, Wala takulu salasa. Don't say Trinity. Trinity, the word Trinity is there. Salasa, Trinity. Don't say Trinity. Means don't believe in things like that nonsense. Brother Swagat has used this word Trinity. The Father is a person, the Son is a person, and the Holy Ghost is a person. That type of thing, that they are all bodies, separate bodies. Father is different, Son is different, Holy Ghost is different, but they are one in a trinity. I was dealing with that on Monday night. If you get the tape, you'll see it. So I was telling Brother Swagat and the audience, I said, you see, the clearest verse on the trinity is the first epistle of John, chapter 5, verse 7, where it says, for there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, Jesus, the Word and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. That is the clearest statement on the Holy Trinity. But I says, you know, it's not in my book. It's not in my Bible. It's not in my Bible. So what do you mean it's not in your Bible? Maybe he thinks I printed it. I said, no, printed by your same church guru who printed this, the King James Version. It's in the King James Version. It is in the Roman Catholic Version. It's there. But now it's thrown out by 32 scholars of the highest eminence, backed by 50 cooperating denominations. They produce a Bible called the Revised Standard Version, RSV, which goes to the most ancient manuscripts nearest to Jesus. And in those manuscripts, this verse on the Trinity was not there. This is an interpolation, a fabrication, an adulteration. And as such, Christian scholars of the highest eminence, 32 scholars of the highest eminence, backed by 50 cooperating denominations, they threw it out without any ceremony. So that's how good your Trinity is. You got the word Trinity, which is not there in any Bible. 
Now that verse of self, itself is now thrown out as a fabrication. Little wonder Allah says, الْكِتَابَ بِأَيْدِيهِمْ So woe to them who write the book with their own hands. ثُمَّ يَكُلُونَ حَزَ مِنْ إِنْدِ اللَّهِ Then they say this is from Allah. لِيَشْتَرُوا بِهِ ثَمَنًا كَلِيلًا That they may reap from it some small reward, some small benefit. وَوَيْلٌ لَهُمْ مِمَّا كَتَبَتْ أَيْدِيهِمْ وَوَيْلٌ لَهُمْ مِمَّا يَكْسِبُونَ So woe to them for what the hands do write and woe to them for what they earn. But still, the book is very useful. You have to have this knowledge to be able to talk to them. So he says you have to study it. One, the oldest idea. So basic and so fundamental, it is no wonder that the God of Jesus used the idea of one to define himself all throughout the Jewish and Christian scriptures. Most Christians believe that Jesus is God that Jesus' Father is God, and that the Holy Spirit is God, all while claiming that God is one. Because they are uncomfortable with calling themselves tritheists, and more comfortable with being labeled as monotheists, the Trinity is something that existed in the pagan world long before Jesus was born. The Romans had that Trinity, the Hindus had that Trinity. And this Trinity which the Christians are following today is not the teaching of Jesus Christ. You see the idea of the Holy Ghost in Christendom is that he is one in a Trinity. But the Christian says that the Father is God, the Son is God, and the Holy Ghost is God. But they are not three gods, but one God. In his catechism, he continues that the Father is Almighty, the Son is Almighty, and the Holy Ghost is Almighty. But they are not three Almighties, but one Almighty. It continues, your catechism. It says the Father is a person, the Son is a person, and the Holy Ghost is a person. That's what Brother Swagger says in his book. Person, person, person. But not three person, but one person. I'm asking what language are you speaking? I'm asking, is that English? By God, it is gibberish, it's not English. You see, you said person, 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 but not three person, but one person. I said, Brother Swagat, you and your two other brothers, let's say you are three identical triplets. And we can't make the difference out between the three of you. They're all identical. We can't make out the difference. If one of you commit murder, can we hang the other? You say no. I'm asking why not? So you tell me that he's a different person. I said, right. What makes him different? His personality. So the father, you know, imagination, the human mind, you can't help. When you use words, they conjure up mental pictures. When you say in the name of the Father, you have a certain mental picture of that old Father Christmas, Santa Claus, millions and millions of times bigger than man, but something like a man sitting on some planet with his feet dangling onto the earth as his footstool, the heaven as his canopy, the loving Father in heaven. When you say God the Son, I'm asking, are you thinking of a prize bull or a false one? No. You're thinking of a handsome young man, blonde hair, blue eyes, handsome features. Something like what you saw in the King of Kings, Jesus of Nazareth, you know, uh, on the day of triumph where Jeffrey Hunter was acting. You know, handsome young man, blonde hair, blue eyes, handsome features, nice beard, not with a poly nose, with a crooked nose. That might make other pictures come into your mind. You know, Shakespeare made Shylock famous. Is it Shylock? Shylock? No. You see, so you're thinking of somebody like an Englishman or a Nordic or a German type with a straight nose, the sun. And the Holy Ghost, something that came like a dove when Jesus was baptized in the river Jordan by John the Baptist or something that came in flames of fire at Pentecost. I said, the picture is not very vivid, but the picture is there. You have three distinct mental pictures. And however hard you try, you can never superimpose those three pictures and create one. There will ever be three in your mind. But when I ask you how many pictures you see, you say one, you are lying to me. Brothers and sisters, you are lying to me. Now your scholars now discover that this is a fabrication, this is a note. This is not the works of John. So they took it out as a fabrication, as an interpolation. Jesus Christ, he never taught the Trinity. 
When he was questioned, Gospel of St. Mark, a learned man of the Jew comes and asks him, he says, Master, in the Hebrew language, Rabbi, what commandment is the first of all? And Jesus answered and said unto him, the first is, Shama Israelu Adonai Elohainu Adonai Echad. Say, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. He repeated word for word what was given by Moses some 1300 years before, without the change of a dot. If Trinity was what he came to teach, that was the right moment to educate the guy, for there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. He never said any such thing. He merely reminded him about what Moses had given 1,300 years before. So there is no such thing as the Trinity as taught in the Bible by Jesus Christ. See, the Christian says that God is in three persons. And they say in the formula, that the Father is God, the Son is God, and the Holy Ghost is God. But they are not three gods, but one God. They continue in the Catechism, in the Book of Instructions, that the Father is Almighty, the Son is Almighty, and the Holy Ghost is Almighty. But they are not three Almighty, but one Almighty. It continues that the Father is a person, the Son is a person, and the Holy Ghost is a person. But they are not three persons, but one person. Am I correct? I don't know the book of Catechism. And Bishop Wakefield, in his book, in his book, it just happens to be here. <laughs> he, he's written about the doctrine of the Trinity, the attributes of God, Trinity, the triune God. And at the end of his essay on the Trinity, Bishop says, he says, yet there are not three gods, but only one, one God only, as seen in the previous section. Therefore, Therefore, we conclude that there are three persons in the unity of the Godhead. And the support is 1 John 5, 7. 1 uh, John yes. 5, 7. One second. Second. One second. <laughs> 1 John 5, 7. What I'm asking is that 1 John 5, 7 is not in my Bible. I want you to find that for me, in this Bible of mine. It, uh, there have been several omissions in some of the modern versions. I'm asking who omitted that? That verse is thrown out as a fabrication in the RSV, Revised Standard Version. Yes, I understand. Who, who did this Revised Standard Version? Not Jews, not Hindus, not Muslims, but 32 scholars of the highest eminence, Christian scholars of the highest eminence. 32 scholars of the highest eminence backed by 50 cooperating denominations of Christianity. They threw it out as a fabrication. And the whole Christian world is come sucking a fabrication and creating a new Godhead, a three in one. This is the Bible. Thank you. There's only one explicit statement, really plainly explicit, that talks about Trinity. And it's in 1 John 5, verse 7, where it said, There are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. These three are one. And there are three that bear record on earth, the water, the blood, and the Spirit. And these three agree as one. This is the compendium for the understanding that everything that Jesus said was about this. Unfortunately, biblical scholars themselves have proved that this was never a part of the original writings of the Bible. This did not come into the existence until the Latin Vulgate. So biblical scholars in the 50s, when they made something called the NSRV, which is no longer in print, the New Standard Revised Version of the Bible, this is one of the verses that they tossed out. Along with the story of Jesus forgiving the adulteress and some other things, they tossed it out. And these are biblical scholars, a college of biblical scholars of repute, said that 1 John 5 and 7 was never a part of the original documents. It only comes in the Latin Vulgate, so it is flicked out. But Jesus taught God was one. Thank you.